Hi there, my name is Madi and I'm a Colorado knitter. This uh, YouTube channel and podcast is all about what I've been making and knitting and um, I love to share about what I've been doing the past couple weeks. And so I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad you're watching. Um, I have lots to share today. <laughs> I'll be glancing down at my notes because I tend to get a little frazzled and nervous and so I'll keep checking down at my notebook. Um, let's see, this is podcast number 17 and it's February 28th, uh, Wednesday um, of 2024. Um, let's see, Moose is going to be making some noise because he's sitting right at the door. Um, what am I wearing? I'm wearing uh, Helen Stewart's um, stillness, yeah, stillness shawl. Um, this was an MCAL in 2020, and it's the first Helen Stewart shawl I've ever made. Um, I really enjoyed her MCAL, and I thought I'd wear it since her current, this year's MCAL is uh, approaching soon. Um, she has, I think she starts it in March. Um, I will not be joining because I got my hands full with some beautiful test knits. Uh, so, uh, but I did want to share this one and I really enjoyed making it. It is knit out of plucky yarn fingering. And I think, I think the win is the drape on this. Um, as we talked about, I'm not a big shawl wearer, but, uh, this one is very comfortable. It stays put, uh, it, it's light, it drapes well. I love the colors, which not typical colors for me, but it worked really well. Um, but her MCAL was really fun. It's very engaging, as you can see, the different stitch patterns that go along in each little section. And I remember it not being, granted it was 2020, so we were just home, um, I guess staying home and being still. And so uh, it was definitely not overwhelming to keep up with the clues. I remember finishing each clue early um, so I can knit on other things. Um, but I really enjoyed it. So uh, hopefully you'll take a peek at her shawls and possibly the MCAL coming up. Um, I think the, the new one that's coming takes four skeins of fingering weight as well. All right, let's see. I did take a picture of this pattern because it is available now as not a mystery. MCAL is Mystery Knit Along. Um, but this is Helen Stewart's Stillness Shawl. And I tend to not block shawls very aggressively because I actually like a softer edge than what's shown there for myself. And you can see it's kind of just a a little bit of a ruffle for me versus really pointy, harsh lines. Um, let's see. I think that's all I have on that. I'll show you a couple other things that I made from Helen Stewart. In the, yeah, I brought them over. Um, later on, because uh, she does have beautiful patterns. I Actually, we'll just show it now. Um, so she, I've knit some of her socks. I've been part of her um, sock clubs and her sock club, if I remember incorrectly, I'm sorry, because sometimes I just skim things instead of read them thoroughly. But um, what I recall of her sock clubs are you purchase the, the bundle of socks early and then you receive a pattern um, over the course of the club. And so, you get one, say, in March, then you get one in April, things like that. And so I've knit a couple of her socks from those clubs, um, and they're beautiful. The way she writes a pattern is really cool because she gives you line by line. And so you can print it out or you can use it on a tablet, but you essentially kind of slash off that row that you've done. Um, so it keeps you really engaged however it's not confusing um but these are some of the socks these are called astrantia socks i'll have to look it up because i'm sure that's not how you pronounce it let's see these are the astrantia socks and hopefully you can see these okay um i definitely had some comments about 
possibly trying to edit. Um, but I don't know if that's in my future or not. <laughs> I think about it sometimes. Um, but I didn't even shower for you guys today. So I don't know if I'll, I'll be able to fit in editing as well. So hopefully that works. And if you can't see what I'm showing um, from my phone, I will link it below. So hopefully it's easy for you to guys to find. Um, but this is my version. I don't remember the yarn, but I loved this detail and it's only on that spot. So it's super cute with these tiny little bobbles, but it's really, the, and her socks are super comfy. So they're beautiful, but they fit beautifully. They, that little pattern doesn't interfere with the fit at all. I really love them. So I have my two socks from Helen Stewart's pattern. And this one, I actually had a hard time remembering the pattern name. So I looked through all her beautiful um, patterns again, trying to figure out which one I had made. So let me see if I can still let you know what it is. I really feel like it might be the Magnolia socks. I think this is the one that I've made. And I tried to make it easy by screenshotting them big, but you can let me know. And the this is my version. And it's a little hard to tell because they're they were laid they were laid this way to dry. So the pattern is kind of on the fold. But they're really pretty when I have them on. And what I'll do is I typically try to post these finished objects on Instagram. And you can find me on Instagram at Colorado Knitter and on Ravelry, which I need to do better about. I'm at Colorado 5 Knitter. Okay, um, so those are the two Helen Stewart socks with the shawl. Um, and let's see if I have any notes about that. Did you hear Moose yawn? We have a weird trait in our family. <laughs> We, we squeak when we yawn. A few of us have it. My niece, you know who you are. You squeak when you yawn, especially when everything is quiet. Then my middle son squeaks when he yawns. I squeak when I yawn. And it must be meant to be because Moose squeaks when he yawns. <laughs> okay. Um, so this episode is probably going to be very sock heavy. Um, I have some whips and half finished objects to show you and my brain went all over the place again uh, with ideas and um, I wish my hands could work as fast as my mind is <laughs> but I'll start with um, the Woolens and Nosh socks because there was a big not big a blooper that went along with them so I think last time I had finished this the one sock so here's my half object and it's Woolens and Nosh and it's her collaboration with Le Garçon. And it's the 90% Targi and 10% Nylon. And what I was kind of thinking of is that, um, as I mentioned before, I usually cast on 64 stitches with a German twisted cast on. I use a nine inch circular needle, uh, 2.25 millimeter, then I do two by two, and then the vanilla shadow wrap heel, and then the shadow wrap toe um, that's in her in Earth Tones Girls pattern. Um, but what I was thinking about is sometimes I like to use the self striping on the cuff as well, but the benefit of using a contrast cuff is that you don't have to have a, the single line or it's easy to find your beginning of the self-striping um, because you don't have to have such a long tail. Let's see if I have the second one. So here you can see I was able to start right at the blue versus having a peak of that orange, which I like the peak of the orange as well, um, but it was just something that dawned on me when I was making this third leg and you'll see why <laughs> but so this is where i'm at and what happened was 
we were visiting Donnie's sister and I was cruising along with a leg. And then I uh, was ready to do the heel. So three legs and I had more than 32 stitches for my heel. So if I'm casting on a 64 stitch sock, half of the sock is usually for the heel. Didn't notice that I had 68 stitches until I got to the heel. And so I was thinking, uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'll just have one sock that's wider. And then it's not fine. And so I stopped and I, Moose is gonna come over. Are you gonna come say hi? Well, come on. <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna be able to see him. Oh no, you're gonna snip everything. Moosers, come here. Come here. Moose, heel. Come on. Can you see him? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you see his big head? Okay, he's gonna snip everything. We'll see what happens. I may have to actually learn to edit. Can you sit down? No, you can't. Um, and so, anyways, I decided to do the leg again. And I'm saving this and seeing if I can get this much leg for a second one from whatever I have left over. And the foot will be something different for Donnie. Um, or I'll just hang it on my swatch wall and call it good. So that was a silly blooper for those woolens and nosh socks. But you're gonna have to sit down. Um, the next sock I wanna show you is super fun. Can you sit, buddy? Let's see if I have to let him out. Um, the second sock I want to show you, I also started when we were visiting Donnie's sister. And this is um, one of Summer Lee's patterns. It is called the Hibernal Sock. Let's see. Oh, did I not take a picture of this one for you? I'll have to look it up. So the Hibernal Sock is a pattern that Summer Lee has out... Um, and she's had the fingering weight sock out for a while, but then she made a DK version. And this is Summer Lee Knits pattern. And so I had this yarn for a while, and sometimes with the DK socks, when I got used to the fingering weight socks, I didn't really know um, maybe the numbers to use for DK. And so it was kind of fun to use this yarn that I got a while back from Sadness Garden. Oh, he's looking at me on that, but don't move it, Moose. Leave it, Moose, sit. He can see my face on the other side of the iPad. Um, and so it's, this is Perfect Yarn from Sadness Garn and it's super wash and it is 80% wool and 20% nylon. And I had two colors, and so this little gray was not planned. But so Summer Lee likes a really long leg, which I like a long leg too, but I'm short and I have not long lean legs. I have pretty big calves. And so um, it's a little too long for my legs. So I'll have to cuff it and then in the future make it a little shorter of a leg for myself. Because what happened is I actually ran out of the one skein of this light gray. And I saved the second skein for the second sock. And so I did luckily have the dark gray, so I was able to add it exactly at the toe. Like it was planned, but it was not planned. And this guy's a little damp still because I did soak it last night. But fun, it feels great. Um, it doesn't feel super, super washy, um, but it's... Uh, it's a nice sock yarn, so it has a really cool pattern. And this is the hibernal stitch pattern. Um, I forget what the stitch itself is called, but it's very easy to memorize. You get into a rhythm. It's just a four row pattern, uh, no cable needle. It's a, I, I found it a little bit, uh, I use the nine inch circulars. And so using a three, US three on a nine inch circular with kind of that thicker DK yarn, um, I definitely found it to be more difficult to get that slip stitch. I'm going to let him out. I'm not going to pause it. I'll be back.
I am so sorry. Hopefully you guys are still here. <laughs> wow. This is crazy. Um, anyways, um, going back to the hibernal yarn, let's see. Um, I definitely like the perfect yarn. I would use it again. I would recommend it. It's, the DK weight is fun. I like, I think I like the solid DK a little bit more than self-striping DK. And the pattern on this is super fun too. So this is on the US3. I think I cast on 48 stitches. Um, love the pattern. Love it so much that you'll see that I, nope, it's in the car. But I am knitting the hibernal hat now with a beautiful yarn that Rachel gave me in North Carolina. Um, but I'll have to show it to you next time because I took it for the kids drop off today. Um, okay. I did, well, another half object. Um, I finished the first Starflight sock, and this is from a few episodes ago, and the Starflight sock is from the Pom Pom Magazine, um, number 46, yeah, 46, now I have the sniffles. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And Moose is silly to, right now because I haven't walked him. It was really cold, so I'm going to walk him after this. Um, let's see. Starflight socks. Well, I totally thought I took pictures of all these patterns, but I don't think I did. So here's the Starflight socks. And this is from, like I said, the Pom Pom magazine that was edited by Candace English. And again, I'm using Le Garçon's um, sock colors. This is from one of their clubs. They have like a three month club sometimes that comes with cool pins and cool stitch markers. Um, actually, I think it's more of a progress keeper, some stickers, um, but these are, this is the colors that they had for that. And here's my little, which you've seen. And again, I blocked it this way but I finished the foot and the little toe which is so cute and I mean it went through me searching for the mini because I clean up and then I can't find things and so I had to take a few hours to just find the mini again um, but I did find it finally and I'm happy with it so I gotta cast on the cuff um, today to not let that sit around it because it's a very cool sock. Very happy with it. Very fun quilting motif. And then it has like a little bit of a textured foot. I'm not sure how much you could see, but it's called a quilt stitch on the foot. Again, not hard to memorize and kind of read your knitting. Um, so super excited about those. Um, Okay. Whew. <laughs> um, all right. And so I'm still pretty hooked on test knitting. And I love Alicia Plummer's design so much. I have very good luck with them fitting well. Um, I have a good time getting gauged with her patterns. And so I am um, test knitting for her again. So I'll start on my whips now because a half finished object like one sock is considered an fo <laughs> at least in my book um so um now on to whips and this is my uh sweater she has a color yoke pattern coming out soon which i'm super pumped about um this one i'm using whole scarn and super soft um not super soft but it is super good at color work um I'm holding this charcoal color double, and it was a cone that I had, and so I'm winding it off um, with my a ball winder to get little cakes of it, because um, it's easier for me to manage and double it. And then um, I used this kind of off-white for the color work. And so she will offer two yolks. One charted is the simple yoke, and this is what the simple yoke is. And then the second one has more color work. Um, I I chose the, this simple version mostly because I saw, um, sorry for the sniffles. Um, I saw her, her pattern 
she was wearing it with a cute skirt and it would look just amazing. And so I thought, oh, you know what? I'm gonna do the simple color work version um, because it's already a lot of sweater with a turtleneck. Um, she will also offer mock neck and crew neck in her pattern. Uh, so I'm in, a, I'm in a good place. I probably will try it on after an inch or so under the sleeve uh, division, just to make sure that the depth is good for me. And then I'll continue on. But it's definitely wooly. I, I like the substantial turtleneck. Somehow it sits away from me a little bit. So it doesn't, it doesn't bug me. Um, if it was super tight, I think it would bother me. But it uh, is a good structure yarn. Like you can see how it kind of just stays up. I'm really in love with Holst. It's, it can be a little wearing on my hands, I noticed. And I only noticed when I picked up the beautiful yarn that Rachel gave me and started working on the um, brim of the hat, the hibernal hat. And that is so nice to work with and so gentle on the hands. Uh, so I, I definitely think holes can be a little tough on the hands, but I really love the result. The yoke has been blocked and soaked and it just makes a gorgeous fabric. The other thing is I'm gonna flash my floats without getting it off of the needles. It's, it doesn't feel heavy, but it's very thick across the chest which will be so nice on those really cold days. So see how the layer of floats right here is gonna be across the chest. So that's gonna be so warm. But it kind of looks cool like that. That's a lot of floats. These are a bit long floats. So some of them I did ladder back jacker, jackard. I don't know what it's called, something like that. Ladder back <laughs> jacquard catching the floats and I can put link the where I learned on the on YouTube I'll link it below um, but it's from Roxanne Richardson her videos are amazing but you can kind of see right here it's essentially like double knitting where it's caught in the back but it doesn't peek through the front I only did that on occasion when there were so like Mm, like these portions where it was a consistently gonna be a long float, then I did the ladder back behind there versus when it was like between these, I caught the float instead because later on I wasn't gonna need to have the ladder back. Hopefully that makes sense. But I will link that YouTube vi video below because she's a wonderful instructor and I, I learned how to do that and it's not as complicated as I had imagined. Um, it's actually uh, pretty satisfying. So um, that is, currently it's called Scotch Bloom, I think, but I'm not sure if that's going to be the name, but everybody, all the testers are lovely. There's beautiful combos out there. It's just endless possibilities. Um, let's see. Oh, <laughs> Uh, every pattern I learned something new. This one I realized, so here's the other swatch I had done, which was my beginning. It wasn't a swatch, but I had done the short rows incorrectly, meaning in the wrong portion of the back of the sweater. Well, then I realized that I, all these years I've been catching or doing my short rows incorrectly when I resolved them. So the short rows I had done incorrectly are when I wrap and turn on a purl row, and then going back to resolve it on the knit row, I've always just knit through both little strands. Well, I'll link it below, but there's a YouTube video on how to do that correctly. I wouldn't uh, reorient the strand that was wrapped to make it invisible, and I learned that on this knit, so that was good. I didn't realize I had been doing it wrong forever. Uh, let's see. Okay, I can't show you the hibernal hat because it's in the car. And I won't make you wait for me while I go walk away again. Um, I have a test knitting problem. I'm completely addicted. But I did sign up to do a second sweater for Alicia Plummer. And I will show you my swatch because that's as far as I've gotten so far. And it's in this cool bag. I always forget who they're from. 
Jenna Rose. They're my favorite, or little baskets. They're my favorite because I can just have them kind of on the ground. Like I said, I like to tension my yarn from below me. So I put these on the ground, but it keeps my knitting clean when Mr. Moose walks in. Um, but I, uh, oh, here's my swatch. So it's a cool textured pattern she has coming out. It'll be a pullover. She uses um, Alpaca 3. I think it's by Issiger. Um, but I am really working through the supplies I have. Um, and so it, it weighs nothing. And so what I did is I am going to use this skein of yarn with some mohair. So this is Issiger Silk Mohair. And it's 75% Kid Silk Mohair and 25% Silk. And then I had enough of this, which is called Warmy. And since she used alpaca, this one is a combination of 75% baby alpaca and 30% merino wool. And so hopefully this will work as the combo. Um, and it's not my best color, it's the gray, but I will maybe wear a collared shirt under or um, wear a lot of blush. <laughs> But I definitely like the fabric. The texture is fun. It's on a US 10 needle, so that's crazy. And it's completely opposite. This is super wooly and amazing. And this is super soft and amazing. So it's fun to have the, the different variety going on the needles. I'll probably cast that on. My plan is tomorrow, we'll see. Okay, I will show you another whip and this little guy has been done for a while actually that's not even true i have had the double pointed needles sitting on this arm forever like months and months just to finish this arm so i finished it really quick last night and he's he's a cutie patootie and he is the good bunny by susan b anderson and let's see uh, if I can show you her picture. So, this is the Good Bunny pattern, and it's on Ravelry. Again, I'll link it below. And then I have some other pictures of him or her. And she, there's a, the pattern for all the clothes. So I will be making those next, because we can't have Mr. Bunny Nakey Poo. And he... This is when it's totally dressed. So this is gonna be on my table because we're approaching Easter, um, but I have these little guys for the clothes and I need to embroider his face. They're such pretty colors. And her kits come in these amazing bags so you can keep everything together and tidy when you decide to stop making them like I do. <laughs> so it lives in there and then it has good bunny and she usually provides the pattern code when you purchase the, the kit. But love Barrett Wool, love Susan B. Anderson's kits and patterns. So he'll be finished soon. Um, all right, so crazy brain ideas and always thinking of crazy things to try. <laughs> I, I posted on Instagram that I sewed one of my swatches from a uh, test knit for Crea Bea, um, which I can't show you quite yet. Uh, she's having a pattern, a vest pattern come out in a magazine. And so I, so you make color work panels for the vest. And so and you start that way, which is nice because you can kind of measure your gauge. Um, and I was off, it was too small. And so I just loved the, the actual swatch itself. So I kept it and kept it. And then I decided to try to sew it on my denim jacket. So 
It's not perfect, but it works for me. And I did sew it on with a sewing machine. So these two edges are finished as far as um, they're cast on and bound off. Um, but I did just cut these once I decided where to cut them on each side. So I don't think it's going anywhere because it's sewn on. But we'll see how it, well it lasts. I think it's cool. I like it. But it just kind of, it's there but not super in your face. And now over the years, way back when I was young, <laughs> I was known to bedazzle a Levi jacket or two. Um, my mom and my godmother are really good friends and they're both amazingly talented gifted, creative, um, artistic. And so uh, they uh, gave me the bug to love wool and fiber. And so just watching them over the years, try new things and just be creative. Uh, they're definitely my inspiration. Um, and so they, I remember bedazzling my Levi jacket full of buttons. I could use my mom's buttons, my godmother's buttons, and we just covered the, I mean, the thing was so heavy, but I was super proud of it. So it definitely took me back to that time when I bedazzled my Levi jacket. Bedazzled is very loosely said because it was all bust buttons and very rustic looking. <laughs> um, let's see. Um... Oh, since I used the swatch for this cool jacket, I started making me think about my swatches more because eventually I'm gonna run out of space back there. And so it, what caught my eye was the swatch bag. And it's a pattern on Ravelry as well. And I had actually seen Marlene Knit's YouTube channel. She had made one and I have a picture of hers. And hers is beautiful neutral tones. Let's see if I can find it for you. This is hers. This is Marlene Knits again. She made one. And what I actually, since I had sewn this with the sewing machine, I actually thought I would just sew it on the sewing machine too. So I don't mind Kitchener Stitch at all. And I think it's a beautiful result. Um, but I might just, sew it on the sewing machine. And so I do plan to use some of these swatches over time and making um, a drawstring bag. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, another thing I tried, and it's wet, it's definitely damp, but I tried to do embroidery on a knit. Mm, I would say it was a learning experience. It was, it's, I think it's still a work in progress and I still think I'm going to try it and possibly add more to make it a fuller embroider on this project. But a couple things I learned, I did uh, download the Embroidering on Knits book. I think it's from Lane, um, but I got it digitally, which mm, I really like a, a book book, but I couldn't find it anywhere. And so it has some beautiful pictures and photos and tips. Um, I did use a embroider stabilizer. So like this is it where you peel this back off. You print, you can print or draw on here. And then you peel the back off and then you stick it onto your embroidery. Now this one is an iron on. So you kind of give some heat so it glues on temporarily. Uh, and so I did do that. What I discovered is um, I was using my Musselburg, Musselburg hat as a template for it. I felt like the glue kind of stuck to the mohair a little bit more. So I was, had to really kind of work it in the water to try to get it off. Uh, so in the future, I think I would not use an iron-on one maybe, uh, more of a sew-on template, and then a hoop, an embroidered hoop. I did not use a hoop this time. Uh, I think I would next time uh, just to hold my stabilizer in place and make sure that I'm not um, maybe catching the knit so that it was crunched and no longer stretchy. Uh, but I will try it again and I may even try it again on this. I haven't decided if I'm going to take this one out or add more to it. 
because maybe what I don't like is that it's too muted, but this is what I have. I don't even know if you could see it. <laughs> I can barely see it. But I'm loving the hat. Um, and this is not a loss. It's just practice because, to be honest, I could just take it out. It's easy to clip. I did use the Spin Cycle Grumpy Birds, but I had a hard time embroidering with the mohair also. It was too sticky, I think. Um, the other thing I thought of was maybe making it with just the strand of mohair, even if it was a colored mohair. Um, so I'm gonna keep practicing. Ideally, it would be better to embroider on the hat before <laughs> it's finished because you have, you know, this mess inside. But the downfall of that is you're not quite sure where you wanna put your embroidery because you haven't folded it in yet. And so pros and cons. Um, so I haven't quite figured out what I wanna do with that. The other thing is some of these are a little too long where they catch. So maybe it needs to be tighter. Again, the embroider hoop could have helped with that. But this is that embroider on Knit's book. Um, I'll show you the title, the cover page, just in case anyone was interested in it. Let's see, where can I find it? I might not be able to find it. Um, but it did have templates, which is kind of nice. Um, embroider. Yeah, it is Elaine, Mag Elaine Publishing. And this is it. But what's kind of nice is it does have some templates that you can print out. So for example, here's one. And I had printed that out on my stabilizer, which made it easier. Um, and these are all the daisy stitch, uh, which essentially is a loop. And then you catch the end of the loop. But again, I want to keep practicing. When it's a win, I'll show you. Um, but I wanted to show you just um, some of the in-progress ideas of it. All right. That is definitely damp. It's super thick and takes a while to dry when it's... It, so I can't open it anymore because of the embroidery. That's the other reason it would be nice. You could even have embroider it when it was not finished on one side. So embroider... And then the other side could be plain if you decided you don't want the embroider showing that day. So it's definitely something I'll keep playing with, an idea. I love the hat. I actually have another um, skein of yarn that I'm going to wind up to make another muscle bro. And I'm gonna use Lavender Loon Yarn Company in 100% organic non-superwash merino sport in the cayenne color. But I think this will be a super fun muscle burl. So I will make another one of those. Um, okay. The pattern that I added to my library this week, as if it was just one, but I will show you what I added. I added the Tao socks. And I posted these on Instagram because I was like, what? This is so amazing. And this is by Bri Brianna Arlene. And I think she's a Colorado knitter too. So um, I did just follow her on Instagram. I hadn't uh, seen her patterns before. I'm super excited. I've been playing with, I think you can use mini, a mini for the color work. Um, but I've pretty much been thinking about this constantly because I can't decide what colors to use um, but I really I really love those so those will be going on the needles hopefully I'll finish some of these single socks um but I have been loving what I've been knitting I love sharing it with you guys thank you so much for your comments and your um, kind words and thank you for following my, me on Instagram. Um, it's been really fun. It was sweet because my dad um, asked about my podcast. And he said, it looks like I'm really having a good time. And I really am. And I have to thank you guys for that. All right. What I've been reading. I finished a book. Um, it was okay. It was 
Lisa Jewell's The Family Remains. And this was the second book to, I believe it's called The Family Upstairs. Um, the Family Upstairs was intense, had me um, really wondering the whole time what was going to happen. And I think The Family Re Remains was um, good, but I think I was a little over it. It was kind of the idea of what happened to the, those kids from The Family Upstairs as they grew up. Uh, so it was good. Um, but I, I was done. <laughs> uh, but a good friend just recommended The Woman by Kristen Hanna. So I will start listening to that on my moose walks. And, um, and she, she definitely, she, she shared it with me with crying face emojis that she loved it. So I'll have to see. Um, it sounds really, really amazing. So I'm excited to listen to that next. Um, I think that's all I have for you guys. I let me know if you're doing the Helen Stewart MCAL. Again, this is the one from 2020, but each section was so entertaining and so beautiful. Highly recommend. Um, or just looking at her patterns out there. And I will catch you on the next one. See ya.